What's going on, you guys? It's your boy Avery LR32 and smash the ever living crystal beast boo boo stain out of that subscribe button so that we can get to our goal of 1,000 crystal subscribers. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, yes, I am not joking in this title. We have a top eight, I'm assuming eighth place in top eight, crystal beast deck profile. Man, I, I, I was hoping it would happen. I was really hoping it would happen. And sure enough, it actually happened the way I expected. And that's with not playing the ultimate crystal overdrive, overdragon, way too long of a damn name. Go get your name changed at the DMV. Uh, fusion monster for crystal beast. <laughs> so, uh, yes, right out of the gate. This is a top eight crystal beast deck profile with literally only three, six, seven crystal beast monsters, not counting Rainbow Dragon because the card's ass and it's just a garnet, basically. <laughs> and we're also not playing the brand new uh, Rainbow Dragon Overdrive, Overdragon the Moon thing. You know, what, whatever the hell that thing is called. Now, don't get me wrong. That card is really busted, and I do wish that this player was playing it. Um, just because of the fact that it's such a cool fusion monster and it'd be so much fun to summon. Um, but the issue with Crystal Beast and everything that I've tested with it is that there's basically only two ways that you can play the deck uh, competitively. You can either go the route of combo where you can play the fusion monster, but you can get nabiru all the way to hell and back. Or you play what clearly this player was playing in uh, New Zealand, I should add. Conclave Control. Now, what is Conclave Control? Well, obviously, it focuses around the Continuous Trap Crystal Conclave that also, you should keep in mind, minus Crystal Bond and Awakening of the Crystal Ultimates, pretty much everything in this deck is not once per turn or just a soft once per turn. Or it's something like Rainbow Bridge of Salvation that's only once per duel and you don't give a shit about it anyway. So, Crystal Conclave is a Continuous Trap once per turn if a face-up Crystal Beast monster monsters you control is destroyed by battle or by card effect you could special summon a crystal beast monster from your deck so you know they run into your sapphire pegasus oh no i'm gonna drop out another one you can send this face up card from the field to the graveyard then target one crystal beast card you control and one card on the field return them to the hand you cannot activate these effects in the same chain which is fine i you're never really going to be in a situation where you need to special summon a crystal beast and then in the same chain like chain it as you're doing that to bounce a crystal beast and then like bring one out like it, it doesn't really matter the key though with conclave is that is a it is a soft once per turn like when you read it it just says once per turn if a face-up crystal beast monster blah 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 it doesn't say you can only use this effect once per turn it just says you can't activate both these effects in the same chain so you can have three of them things up all three of these bitches up and you can essentially bounce three cards the same goes for crystal miracle the only thing that is once per turn on it as a hard once per turn is banishing it from the grave to place a crystal beast from your hand deck or graveyard in your spell and trap zone this thing's an infernity barrier that's not once per turn so you could have both of these set and you're essentially playing with two omni negates while your opponent's playing with a six card hand which now becomes four because you've got two omni negates um so anyway let's go ahead and go into this deck profile here we're playing one copy of the rainbow garnet <laughs> aka rainbow dragon i wish that this card was better i wish that they would have released a retrain for it unfortunately like you have to play one of it some some builds play two because you don't want to just draw it and then it's just a brick um but you have to play it because you want to be able to use uh, awakening of the crystal ultimates and the only errata that rainbow dragon got was to be always treated as an ultimate crystal card so by using rainbow dragon in combination with the crystal ultimates card that is what gives you the ability to dump bridge of salvation which can then get you to a crystal beast and then any field spell hence why we're playing necro valley mystic mine we're playing three copies of crystal beast rainbow dragon cards really good um another reason why you're playing rainbow dragon because when you banish it from your spell and trap zone you have to be able to add an ultimate crystal monster if the rainbow dragon's in your hand then this thing's just dead so you know you have to have this in your deck banish it summon out the crystal beast its effects are negated who gives a shit and then you add the rainbow dragon which does even though it's a brick turns on your crystal ultimate to be used we're playing three copies of d shifter because it's really fucking good three copies of sapphire pegasus because it's not once per turn it's from the gx era it's really fucking good we're playing one ruby carbuncle because if you're not playing this i don't know what you're doing pimp <laughs> And then we're playing three Ash Blossom. Moving on to the spells, we're playing two Crystal Bond. This is the only thing that's once per turn. You add a Crystal Beast from deck to hand, place one with a different name in your spell and trap zone. It's cute. Two copies of Talents. You could throw in a Call By, I guess, with only one talent. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I feel like this player just opted to play two Talents just because they felt that was better. Three Rainbow Bridge because it's not once per turn. <laughs> three Prosperity. 
two crystal ultimate because the card's actually pretty good like it's really versatile three copies of bridge of the heart so during your main phase you can normal summon a crystal beast monster in addition to your normal summoner set you can only gain that effect once per turn who gives a shit you can only use it to the following effects of bridge of the heart once per turn during your main phase you can destroy a crystal beast card you control or in your hand and if you do add a crystal spell or trap from your deck to your hand if a crystal beast card or cards is placed in your spell and trap zone even during the damage step you can target a card your opponent controls return both that card and this card to the hand so in combination with conclave you're essentially bouncing like two cards which is you would think is not broken because that's basically like what the new exodia cards do they just bounce shit to the hand like a compulse but you got to keep in mind like that's that's really good like you're, you're going up against tier and like they're trying to get their field spell established and like they want to use the effect to pop and you just shotgun the bounce and then they don't get the pop like a little interactions like that that people aren't prepared for can really throw people off and then we're playing one necrovalli and of course the one should have been banned card <laughs> <laughs> so of course we're playing this with bridge of salvation the first effect where there's two level tens we don't give a rat's ass about the only thing that we care about is that we can banish it from the graveyard to add any crystal beast monster in any field spell from deck to hand you can only apply each effect once per duel hence why we're playing it as one of so you know if you're going first you get set up with like a baguska and a necro valley and if they're a tier element player they're gonna start crying all the way home <laughs> uh because now they're not gonna have any monster effects and of course necro valley is just gonna shut them on out their graveyard you better have that galaxy cyclone twin twister cosmic cyclone you better have something for this booty card <laughs> then we're playing three imperm three of the conclave and two uh crystal miracle aka infernity barrier um so right out of the gate with this main deck this is hilarious as shit because if you look at the cards in this deck minus the talents the prosperities the imperms the necro valley and the mystic mind and the bridge of salvation everything else in this deck is in the structure deck and like literally minus prosperities this whole deck is cheap af like literally like you can pick up a lot of these cards for pennies on the dollar like what bridges salvation the dollar cool you can get necro valleys for pennies on the dollar in terms of what like two to three dollars right now like you're, you're you're good pimp you ain't breaking the bank even with this side deck like you're not breaking the bank like maybe with the super polys and evenlies you're looking at like uh like what maybe 10 a piece on the super polys and 10 a piece on the evenly so you're looking at like 60 dollars and like two bucks a piece on the nibiru's but like other than that it's not bad the extra deck is a bit pricey i'll give you that but i feel like if you just wanted to play at locals you could cut a lot of this stuff out like real talk so uh for the side deck we're playing three nibiru one mud dragon to go with the super poly one feather duster two cosmic three super poly three uh evenly and then two different dimension ground uh this turn any monster sent to the graveyard is banished instead tier element is a very very tough matchup and it's only going to get better with the new mill support because it's going to be tier zero so let's go through this extra deck real quick so we've got one mask arena little uh, nightmare package of cerberus phoenix and unicorn one access code because it's broken af um really with the ability to be able to have access to zenith and sapphire especially being able to get out carbuncle once you get out carbuncle if you're getting out like let's say three sapphire pegasus and putting zenith in the back row or even getting out zenith with carbuncle like you're gonna have a lot of monsters for link plays and rank fours things like that uh, we're playing one borbo and chacanine to go along with the zeus um these just require level four monsters so you just use two level fours to make the chacanine and stack the borbo and then you have you know zeus plays uh we've got one new garris because if you end up with like let's say a sapphire pegasus in your graveyard you just use two level fours detach two and then use one of its three effects for anything or you just use it to bring out a sapphire pegasus to dump another one in the into the spell and trap zone we have cowboy i guess because he was concerned about going to time abyss dweller because it's a amazing this format a uh, one chidori so if this card succeeds summon you target a set card your opponent controls return that target to the bottom of the deck once per turn you can detach an exceeds material from this card then target one face up card your opponent controls return that target to the top of the deck it requires two level four wins so pegasus and i think that's really your only wins yeah that's literally your only win so you're, you're revolving around pegasus plays here one baguska because this card's amazing honestly tornado dragon just for more back row hate um this deck doesn't really have a whole lot of ways to deal with back row if you're not bouncing it and then Zeus, and then of course Garua, uh, because you have Super Poly in the uh, side deck. Uh, Garua is just an amazing card. And if you think about it too, it requires two monsters with the same type and attribute, but different names. So like what, Carbuncle plus Sapphire, you attack with both because maybe you're in a weird game state, and then you go Super Poly, make Garua, and do 3,000. So that's that's not bad. Card's, card's really good. So uh, really quick here, before we run out of time. 
Let's do some quick test hands. One, two, three, four, five. This isn't terrible. So you set the imperm and the miracle. You have talents on hand in case they decide to hand trap you. Uh, you've got rainbow bridge to add any crystal spell or trap. So we're talking conclave. You can't add bridge of the heart, but you don't care because that just gets you to bond or ultimates, but we didn't open up a rainbow dragon. So we can just go bond and just start our engine from there. That gets us to Sapphire Pegasus. That can throw a Zenith into the back row. And uh, woo, yeah, once you get that, you're looking good. You've got the miracle for the Omni Negate. You've got a monster negate. If the opponent hand traps you, you can just rip a card out of their hand. Then they're what? With these two negates, with the Imperm and the Miracle, they're basically playing with what? A two to three card hand at this point? Woo wee. Ooh, this, card, this, this deck looks good. It looks so cool. <laughs> now, really quick before I end this video, I know a lot of people are going to be asking, Avery, why is this guy not playing the Fusion? Here's the thing with the Fusion that I've seen in all these damn replays I'm seeing on YouTube. Is it cool to end on a board of Apollosa with a Phoenix pointing to it so that it can't be destroyed by battle, even though that's really irrelevant in today's format, and you end on Overdragon with the um, 11,000 attack Overdrive Dragon? That is really cool. Here's the issues. Number one, you can be Nibiru to hell and back in that play. Number two, you can be Sphere Moded to hell and back. Number three, you can be Lava Golem to hell and back. Yes, it's cool if the opponent cannot out that 11,000 attack monster, but at the same time, when you have to commit to the Rainbow Over Dragon Fusion along with summoning out the brand new 11,000 attack thing, you don't want both those monsters on the board at the same damn time because you're just wasting resources. And all the combos I'm seeing, they're forced to go into that overdrive or overdragon rainbow fusion before they go into the 11,000 attack one or the one that gains 7,000 attack. So it seems like a lot of commitment for not a whole lot of a reward. The card's busted, don't get me wrong. But I think if you want to be as competitively viable as you can, this is the perfect template to start with and move forward with. The, the fusion is cool, don't get me wrong, but the fact that you have to banish seven crystal beasts plus an ultimate crystal monster, you're essentially playing four more garnets in this deck. Like, you got to play Topaz, Amethyst, Amber, Tortoise, and, like, all those cards are booty booty butt cheek. Like, it's cool to have those other targets, and, like, you can get to them quick with Sapphire Pegasus, but why would you play those bad cards to summon a really big boss monster that if it gets Dark Rulered or kaiju or Lava Golem, what the fuck ever, you're going to be crying. <laughs> and so I would rather be as competitively viable as possible while still playing Crystal Beast. And this is really cool. Like, seriously, especially for a, for a, uh, a, a player who doesn't have a lot of money. Like, you buy three structure decks... Buy a couple of other cards, and, like, you're off to the races, my guy. So, you know, maybe you don't have prosperities. Use Extrav. Use Upstart. Use One Day Peace. Use Magical Mallet. Get creative. <laughs> so, guys, please, let me know what you think about all this and more in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.